Now to go ahead and show you the three types of American buffer tubes that I have here, the two mil specs and the um, and the commercial one. First, I want to go ahead and show the, the the mil spec. This is a standard mil spec. It's you know, mil spec size. You can see it's hard to see in the video, but you can see the uh, the machining on the outside here, the machining marks. It's tough to see. You feel on the inside it's very smooth. It's gun drilled out, which is a very smooth drilling process. However, it does make the manufacturer more expensive. That's why these typically sell for about $40, $45 for a mil spec tube. This one here is an American size mil spec, but you can feel on the inside it's not been gun drilled, it's just been milled out. Now they're probably doing this in, the, in some factory here where they have you know, a good CNC machine and what they do is they they drill it out and they, and then they put down some sort of a, uh, a, a polishing bit in there that will go ahead and smooth it out. Now it's not as smooth as the gun drilled but on the other hand it's much much smoother than the ones made overseas and these are uh, typically pretty good themselves also and you can generally find these for uh, you know you know 30 bucks or so now one of my favorite tubes believe it or not is actually one of these commercial tubes from DPMS now um, there's a few things that that, that this tube have that, that I kinda like first off um, I've spoken to different people in DPMS, I've gotten two different answers. One person tells me that these are actually uh, machined out of a solid piece, that these are, uh, these are gun drilled, you can feel they're very smooth on the inside. Another person tells me that they're extruded and, they're, and they actually have a cap welded on place in the back. Well, you know, I, you know, from what I see and from what it looks like to me, it, it very well might be extruded, but I've shot thousands and thousands of rounds for these DPMS tubes. And I've never had a single issue. Another thing that it has that I like is this little slot here, right here, this little cutout that allows you to have more surface room, more surface area contact with the buffer retaining spring, the, sorry, the buffer retaining pin. It goes and sits over on the shoulder as opposed to just kind of, you know, sitting on the edge and retaining this. And when I've seen it happen, I've actually seen these uh, sometimes these wear out and they kind of shoot up like that because uh, this kind of uh, grinds down. This little surface over here on the edge will grind down and it'll kind of stick out. And then you have all kinds of issues where this here will go ahead and give it more surface contact that will sit over it. So I would like to go ahead and reinstall this DP Mist tube on this. Uh, receiver right here, and I'd like to show you what it what it is that I do. That are kind of a couple tricks that I learned over the years. First things first. Take your castle nut, screw it on, all the way to the bottom. Next thing I do is I take not one but two of these um, spring retaining plates. Now why? I take two, not one. As you saw before, on with that, uh, that, that tube and, uh, and retaining pin, it's very easy to go ahead and spin it around and cut into the tube. Because there's very little surface area between this nipple and this groove that's cut out for this to sit in. So what this does is allows, it goes ahead and gives me twice the actual surface area. No, two on, and it makes it much, much harder for it to come off in the future, or for it to spin on itself in the future. Sorry. No, should be the wrong. Seems to be cut out for a different size. Now we go ahead and spin this on. Put it on. See here, we have shows we have one more turn to make. Let me push that down. See that pops up, sits nicely into that little shoulder there. Push this down. I'm just gonna hand torque it, hand tighten it for a second. And now there's one thing also that people make a big mistake of doing 
is they take their spanner wrench, which is mine's over here, and what they do is they hold their receiver like so, and they go ahead and they tighten this on. You know, it would be this way, they tighten it on. That is the wrong way of doing it. If you tighten it like this, all you're gonna do is you're gonna spin this tube around on, on, on this nipple, you're actually gonna cut into the tube and, uh, and you know, again, it won't be this bad, but you're gonna go ahead and cut a little bit into the aluminum and it's very easy to flatten out these, uh, these little ridges here, these little uh, threads. You wanna hold it from the extension or the buffer tube, then go ahead and tighten it down. And you see it is perfectly aligned. Sometimes you'll get it if you hold it from here and you, and you, and you tighten it down, this will be slightly askew and you, this will go ahead and be uh, kind of on a, uh, instead of a, a perfectly, you know, at, um, at, yeah, at, you know, at 180 degrees, kind of sitting up and down, you're actually be slightly uh, off, like a, you know, about five degrees or so. One last thing is a lot of companies, manufacturers, will go ahead and stake these. Uh, I'm kind of torn on the issue of staking. Yeah, if you're gonna go ahead and keep it for that way, you're gonna go ahead and, it's a good idea to go ahead and stake it. If you think you're gonna go ahead and change things, um, I would leave it um, the way it is. And plus, every time you do shoot, and every time you do use the firearm, it's always good to go ahead and check every, uh, every um every part make sure everything's tightened down everything is uh you know from your gas keys to your uh you know your 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 pistol grip screw to 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 your receiver extension castle nut another thing to go ahead and be uh careful for to watch out for is when you go ahead and buy uh you know uh you know when you find a good deal on a on a six position stock kit or 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 you buy a rifle that seems to be, you know, too cheap to be, uh, to be true. To be careful for is with these foreign-made stock kits, the castle nut and the washer are supposed to be steel, but they're not. They're aluminum. You can tell right here. These are from a foreign-made one. These are you know, domestically made one. And to go show you the different uh, weights and, um, and how much they weigh, American-made castle nut is almost. 0.594 ounces, it's almost six hundredths of an ounce, whereas, sorry, six tenths of an ounce, this is not even a quarter ounce. This is, again, six tenths of an ounce, and this weighs you can see it's 0.16, not even a quarter ounce. So just to show you the different uh, things that you want to watch out for, these will be much weaker, much more likely to fail. And I've, you know, working in these companies, I've seen numerous of these stock kits come back failed. Um, you know, either it's the, you know, the nuts that break or, or the washers that break. I have here a comparison of the American-made buffer and American-made spring versus a overseas spring and overseas buffer. Now, just a few things you can tell right off the bat. There is a a roll pin here holding this end cap on. And you can see on the foreign made one, they didn't even put this through properly. They uh, they kind of left it half hanging out. Now I'm not sure if it came out through use or came out through uh, it was always you know it was it was never manufactured correctly, but you know just, just something to look out for. Here you know uh, w with the springs you should know that there is a certain tension rate which I don't know what is offhand, but I guarantee you that none of the importers or you know people importing this from China know what it is offhand either or know what it is in general. They just go ahead and buy stuff in the open market. So I would go ahead and be careful about buying these. In conclusion, while it's always best to go ahead and spend the money on on the mil spec tube that you know was 7075 aluminum, you know what's a T6 heat treatment, you know what's gonna be gun drilled and they made in the USA and it's the top qualities. Sometimes you just can't, you know, when some money is tight and you have to go, you know, spend a little bit less money. So a great substitute for a mil spec tube would be go ahead, or if you already have a commercial stock, let's say, to go ahead and get either the DPMS commercial uh, mil spec um, commercial tube, or to go ahead and get a, uh, this one's from UAG, and I, and I know UAG is, um, 
they're importing only mill tubes from overseas and not importing uh, uh, extruded and, and with a cheap poor or a poor weld in the back. So go ahead and stay away from some of the other unknown brands. Um, if you can, go for the American um, mill spec. If you can't, go for either the commercial or the or the uh, UAG brand. The Another thing to know also is make sure you go ahead because you don't know what type of heat treating or if any heat treating that this aluminum has on it. It might not be as hard as, definitely not as hard as this aluminum or is probably not as hard as this aluminum. I would definitely go ahead and get another um, receiver end plate to go ahead and double them up so you have twice as much surface area riding in that small groove. Thanks for watching.